How do you guys feel about the dating market currently? That's all I needed to hear. <laughs> yeah, honestly. The deep yeah. sigh. <laughs> Someone said this, dating for women is like shopping, dating for men is like going on job interviews that you have to pay for. Yeah, makes sense. You're gonna do any dating online or even in person, well, you're gonna have to set up a date, which is gonna require you to pay probably for the first one. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, and you're gonna have to have your list of questions ready or come prepared or try to look the right way, so. Bro, I went on a date and this girl ordered a lot of food. Oh shit. I've never really had that. I think any girls I've ever taken on dates, they always didn't really order much at all. She ordered like two things type shit. I was like- Like two appetizers or like two entrees? Like two entrees. <laughs> oh shit. We went to this sushi spot. Not to say that I couldn't afford it, but sushi I was like- You gotta be careful. You can run it up quick because all those rolls be like 19, 19, uh, 19. Oh God. You gotta be careful with that. She got like the two like fat- I was Two like, big rolls. They're like 12 on them. I, I said, like, where are you gonna put that? <laughs> oh, I didn't know we was doing two entrees. Ryan was trying to grab one. She slapped her hand. Oh, oh, we're not sharing. Oh, that's for you. Oh, two entrees. Did you read the one that asked her to go on the date though? I was interested. Do you wanted to hang out with her? But him. I didn't, uh, I did offer let's go get food. She didn't even bring her wallet though. I don't think any of them do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> Which is why around 60% of men are now single and sexless. Yeah. And this is where another set of companies have stepped in to offer a full solution. MindGeek, Replica, OnlyFans, and Twitch. All of these shady yeah. companies offer a different kind of distraction. Now, MindGeek is the most obvious. Their sprawling empire of adult sites caters to any desire you could ever dream of, however unrealistic it may be. And the dangers of widespread internet adult entertainment are already well known by now. But it's often understated just how damaging they really are. We know these sites rewrite the brain and act like any other addiction. When people watch these videos, they get a new dopamine hit every time they click on a new video, which then fades incredibly quickly. Mm -hmm. And most users often fall into a similar pattern of getting desensitized to this content. Like an addict searching for a better high, people often report seeking out darker, more depraved fantasies over time, as they get bored of just the vanilla stuff. And over time, this starts to ruin your own relationships in real life. You always want something more extreme, more dark, someone more attractive, never being content with actually realistic standards. And eventually these sites- Oh, that's actually crazy. Yeah, like, uh... he's preaching to the choir because this is shit that I think everybody knows. But I'm thinking about this. Remember when we were in, let's say, high school, the baddest girl at your high school, you know, bad, whatever. She was the best. She was so cute. You wanted to be with her. And then we move and you get older and you start to see more women. And you look back at the girl in high school, you're like, that's who I mm -hmm. thought was attractive? When I have the whole field open, she used to be a big fish in a small pond and is now a motherfucking guppy in a big ass ocean. And there's so many more fish that look so much better. And it's good, but it's bad at the same time. At the time. same time, there's the people that see the bad girl in high school, but now they go on Instagram and they see all the baddies. Yeah. And they still just feel as disconnected or they go back to school like, man, you're not even that. You're not, you're not all that. Mm -hmm. You see other guys simping over here like, these are the girls. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like you get unrealistic expectations and, because- and you, and you update standards in your head where it's like, no, you, but- because you see someone else online that had this or that looks like that. So it's like anytime you talk to someone new, you compare it to that. And it's like, and it's then you're a girl with 3,000 followers and you get a handful of likes from these verified professional athletes or actors or just a random YouTuber. And you're just like, but then what's online and what they're believing is just not real. Yeah. And they're like, fake. well, these guys are my people like me here, but dang, I can get this. Now, I would go as far as to say I'm a little different because I can understand that there are the most beautiful women I've ever seen in the planet on my phone. But realistically, that's not gonna. And I also do, like, if I see a girl in public, whatever, I am not crazy picky if we keep it in a buck 50. Uh -huh. I can see beauty in the smallest things. I'd be looking for any reason to, like, qualify a girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, she kind of got a fucking crazy face, but like her elbows look nice. Yeah, you start canceling other stuff out. That's what women do. Women look for reasons to like disqualify a guy. Guys look for anything to no, qualify. No, no facts, no facts. That's a bar, yeah. <laughs> because I had been around so many beautiful women constantly, I said to my friend, I was like, Brian, I'm, I'm in a mood for like an ugly chick. <laughs> you think, I bet girls do the same thing though. I bet you girls probably do the same thing. They probably have been with enough dudes and they're like, I want to, I'll do the guy that's a little bit medium ugly. Am I effed up for saying like- Brian's like, I need other girl. She might be a little more humble. That's what I'm saying. I need a little ugly joint just to be like, so she's cooler. Like no bullshit. Yeah, and if she has more to her, it's like, I don't let. And it's different because all I've seen and all I've been around is yeah. super cute and super this and super popular. And, uh. Yeah, because the girl may be looking for the most attractive, best person on this and this. And maybe you've been around the beautiful girls and you're like, okay, they have that, they mm -hmm. have the beauty, but 
damn, the rest of the package might not be there. Or they have 90%, but not the 10. But then the ugly girl has the 10% bad looks, but the 90% everything Ooh. else is great, so. I'm using that word ugly very liberally. I'm, it's more just, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, you know. I'm mean, ugly, Ryan's talking about is five. I'm talking about like a, a very normal, yeah. I'm not saying Are ugly. you saying like someone that you wouldn't normally go for, like ugly? Like, like a girl that you wouldn't do a double take at. Like, so, a, so a two. Nah, real shit, there was a girl at this bagel store that I kept seeing. And like out of 10, what was she? Probably like a like a five. Okay. Like a 4.7. Okay. And you're like, I'm feeling her now. And she just was not conventionally like, wow, that girl's beautiful. She just had that face on like she had a face for radio. But she said she's beautiful eyes. And I was like, wow. Okay. You I, found beauty in her. Exactly. I found the beauty in her. But it, it is a crazy concept of the more we've gotten exposed to mm -hmm. the baddest of the bad. Now when I'm looking for a wife, I already got a taste of A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. So now it's like, am I missing out? Cause I, am I gonna commit to this one? Cause there's all these different options. It is bad. It's a double-edged sword. Getting experience and being with a bunch of women is good in many ways, but also bad in ways for Yeah, different are you reasons. gonna be fulfilled? Are you happy now? Do you think you can end up picking one if you've been with three? Yeah, it's a- uh... The his shopping analogy. Like if you just f given one shampoo, here's a shampoo, then you just use you it. You question like, it. Hey, this is a good shampoo. But if you could choose from a thousand shampoos. You're like, I didn't pick the right one. Well, that one does this one and has the hair moisture technology, but that one smells a little bit better. But that one smells decent, but doesn't have as many things. Yeah, it's like when you're on the Tinder or those apps, do you think they only have one match? Nah, bro, they got lined up matches. But then it's also, but then what, you're gonna go to the bar now to meet somebody? And then it's, hey, well, they're also getting hit on by all the dudes in person, so yeah. Uh, yeah, cause you can't do the bar anymore because all those girls don't even wanna hook up. They just wanna feel pretty and, and get they free wanna, drinks. And they post yeah. their pictures or whatever, which is why I bet you a lot of guys just say, fuck it, I'll just go jerk off at my house with the like they yeah. probably just don't care. Yeah. They're probably self-aware of it. Like, well, yeah, I know I'm not getting no matches on here. I haven't tried to meet a girl in six months and I'm overweight. I don't really give a fuck though. That's why you get hopeless and it's like, mm -hmm. give up. But then it's like, how many years go by? You're like, oh fuck. No. Nah. Now I really damaged myself. I found myself clocking out of the dating scene because me, I like, oh, getting a nice dinner and going to do a little cute thing, whatever, whatever. But then thinking about the modern girls of the, in the city and in this generation, you're being a gentleman, taking her out to a dinner, doing this, Did being she a gentleman. Did she like that though? Like you're doing all this nice stuff, but for her it's like, oh, just another one of these. Like, oh, this guy just hit me up. Yeah, I'm gonna have dinner, dad, blah. But to you, it's like, you're looking forward to it, this and that, and it could just be another. Hey, yeah, you never know. It's... Oh yeah, another guy wants to have dinner. Cool, and good. I'm one of six. Yeah. And this isn't like, oh, women are the worst. This is just the happenstance of this. Of... No, it's just women do have more options. That's just what it is. They have more options, the guys have less, and mm -hmm. it's harder to stand out, like you said, as a guy. How do you do that? That's why we always say you just gotta, you gotta add other things to your arsenal. But even at that, it's still the same type of game in another way. Yeah, because the women on the app are the hot commodity. And back in the day, people met organically, and the girl didn't have five other boyfriends. Dating apps was taboo. It was, it was almost looked down upon. Like, if you met somebody online, it's like, oh. Yeah, I wonder how many of our great, great grandparents, how many boyfriends or girlfriends they had before they got married. I bet you it wasn't too many. Mm -hmm. Ask your parents how many boyfriends they yeah. had before they got married. My grandma said that, yeah, her husband, that was her only boyfriend ever, and that was wow. the father of her kids. And I'm like, holy fuck, we're in a new age. That was, uh, and that was just grandma. I can't imagine my great, great, great grandma. Yeah, they met at the motherfucking, at the ice cream saloon thing, whatever, and then they got married the motherfucking next week. But then we also looked at it as the, uh, the guys back then probably got away with cheating 10 times more, because they could just drive down the street and go cheat. They didn't have to worry about somebody texting you. <laughs> so, <laughs> no surveillance. They were still, fact, all the problems were still there, I feel like, but because we have all the options in the world now, I feel like it's far more worse. It's like, why have sex with someone when you could just put on the haptic vest, the VR, and, and just sit there for however long you want? Mm -hmm. And have a pocket machine. Oh, I seen and a little flashlight. I seen the Dave show, he got the F me silly three. So oh, I saw that. It got legs and everything. Because instead of using all the sexual energy and dopamine, trying to become a better person, improving your life, pushing past your anxieties, and actually finding the right person for you, you can just sit at home doing nothing but watching these videos and you're watching just that. And we have no idea how this is going to affect children and their developing brains yeah, in the future. The but what we do know now is that the average age people first watch adult content is now just 12 years old. Oh my god. Uh, I think I was 10. To watching it regularly. Probably even more. Because who knows how many won't admit to this. But these sites aren't interactive yeah. in the same way that Twitch or any fans are. Those platforms are far more effective as distractions from the real world, ensnaring lonely young men by encouraging parasocial relationships between the viewers and the streamer or the model. A generation of lonely, desperate young men who have been streamers, shunned by society, sexless for years, with no sense of community or connection in their real life. Is curious that 
Walking down the avenue that is America, only one in three men under the age of 30 have had sex in the last year. And you hear sex and your brain fires, but the bottom line is, it's a key step to the elemental foundation of any society, and that is relationships. Men, young men aren't attaching to work, they aren't attaching to women, they aren't attaching to schools. We are producing too many of the most dangerous person in society. Mm. And this is where Twitch Democrats can make their money. When powers of young men eventually turn to these platforms, they will find- And we're creating broken people. After. We're creating these broken people. And then when all the shootings and all these travesties happen, what went wrong? We need to visit. Well, let's look five steps back to see how these people got created. It's too hard to do that. We want to look at the gun violence and mental health. Okay. Ugh. They had like archery, they had like shooting classes in high schools where they had guns in high schools back in the olden days. The mental state of men specifically and people in general was so much better then than it is now. Yeah. Like how are we more advanced, but worse off? Yeah, it's a very corrupt, damage broken. And it's like the US is bad. Like you could, I'm sure you can go somewhere else and people will probably think things we're talking about is taboo or like but not it's even. It's fine to speak on America because we're dealing with social contracts and all the norms that are in place. This is exactly what we're gonna see. It's literally our lives. I yeah. mean, we're living through it. So we could be a product of this real quick tomorrow if I want to. But it goes to show, like, damn, what? Did, where did we go wrong in America? You know, it's like mm -hmm. a little too much freedom, a little too much, <laughs> a little too much choice. They delude themselves into thinking that the streamer or model actually likes them and knows them when they donate money to them. Meanwhile, the streamer and the platform rake in the money, use some random assistant in a third world country, yep. and string these men along, all whilst making millions. Eventually, it always ends in tragedy. After the illusion breaks for these men, or some lonely guy with more money, outbids them. And this is when people turn to AI girlfriends, oh, like the chatbot being sold by Replica. And this Bruh. is the next stage of See? this process, being the closest thing we've come to simulating real human interaction. And it's still- Like, why do they even make that app? Actual meaning, or so. I mean, Replica has already started monetizing in the oh same way as Twitch and OnlyFans, with a basic subscription only getting you a vanilla. Like they know that people are gonna get this and be on there all day talking to their girlfriend because they're gonna think it's real. It's like when you're watching these Twitch streamers, oh, it feels like I'm hanging out with you, whatever, donating, they're responding. No, they're only responding to you because you're giving them money. And it's like so sad. a sort of supplemental band-aid for a lonely guy. Like, oh, it makes me feel good for a little bit. But after a while, you create like a disgruntled, weird- or you rewire your brain where you're like, no, oh, this is normal. Me and her are good. Oh my gosh. Me and AI Jessica, we're in love. We're really living through the Black Mirror episodes right now. Wow. But if you pay a bit extra, you can then unlock the more adult content. Right. Exactly what I just said. Getting go. <laughs> that you've been seeing on the screens your whole life since you were 12. Finally, you can get rid of the repression deep inside of you. Or at the cost oh of- Oh my God. God. You see, the problem with all of these companies is that they rely on lonely men to function and they make their money by keeping them lonely. Most of our modern economy thrives on loneliness. Wait till the AI loneliness robot looks like a real girl saying whatever you want. For our economy. By offering an inferior, ersatz version of companionship, these companies sucker people in. But over time, they're just making us more lonely. As these products never fill a hole, they're just desperate attempts at numbing yourself for a little bit. Yep. I mean, I've just said that. That the loneliness and emptiness these companies are generating puts them in the same category as big tobacco companies. They're both peddling an addictive product that severely damages the health and life of the user, and society's then left to deal with the consequences. And the data is unsettling to say the least. Over 60% of young men are now single, somehow twice the amount of women. Men also take their own lives four times as much and act out with extreme violence far more often as well. The incels always get the headlines, but the rest of the normal disenfranchised young men are invisible to society. Lots of the largest companies today are part of this loneliness economy, making literally hundreds of billions off of it. However, Meta are the worst offenders, and their grand plan is to dominate the loneliness industry, all through the Metaverse, where Meta will be able to house all of their time-sucking apps on one immersive yeah, platform. Yeah, once the like goggles Apple, come out, I'll be able to oh, take a cut from everything I've else glasses, right? VR as well. It's a license to print money, because by cornering the VR market, Meta will be in control of the next generation of artificial companionship, from adult content all the way to- Turning into robots, like cyborgs. cyborgs realistic and convincing by virtual reality. The immersion we, alone- We literally about to lay down in the tube yeah, and then just have our, our avatar do the world for, live for us. So much more profitable. With the data extracted from living inside of the metaverse, they'll be able to find out exactly what your desires really are. Every <laughs> repressed behavior, every repressed emotion, and every action you take is all tracked by the metaverse. They'll even track your eye movement to see exactly how much you interact with an advert and which AI girlfriend draws your eye the most Bruh, and your or product to match your eye movement. And as you become more addicted to this world, you'll start retreating more from the real world. Meta's VR headsets and Apple's Vision Pro will take you further and further away from reality. 
this is our new economy, where they will addict you to the virtual world with things that your primal brain just can't stop Imagine using. You your we'll the out your real world entirely. I mean, even today, the more you're glued to your phone with all of these apps, the less of a life you actually get to live, making you more lonely and thus more addicted to your phone. But with augmented reality, it's like you never even put it down in the first place. You're permanently living in this world. And pretty soon, investors think that AR will be like smartphones today, an almost essential tool in navigating real life. And with enough convenience and social pressure, it'll catch on. All the top companies in Silicon Valley are betting on this, which is a very scary prospect. I mean, Meta's apps can already convince people's grandmas that the world is flat or push people into believing whatever they're told to believe. Giving Meta more power over the literal way that you see the world is something that's horrifically disturbing dystopian and is already happening. And that's why you know the Metaverse will be used just in the same way as they already use their other apps, but with a hundred times more power. They'll sow division by promoting whatever's controversial, filter people into toxic echo chambers. I saw that at the Apple product, those goggles, Yeah, yeah I've seen that. Um, where the one guy, the one black guy that reviews all this stuff, he was just saying how it has eye tracking where you just move your eyes a little and it'll click onto something different and you just go like this and it clicks it. I hate to be like pessimistic and doom and gloom, but there is a way that people watching this can break out of this. It's like, you don't want to be someone who can It's like the floods all this coming, stuff. but you have to just be aware. Like, how are you mm -hmm. in and out? You're either going to sink or swim with all this. Mm -hmm. We all want you guys to be swimming. But people, it's like, you know what you should and shouldn't do, typically. Usually people know that. Like, But you, there's a lot of people that just let outside factors control them and dictate what they think and believe. And it's hard to accept the truth. People don't want to watch content like this because mm -hmm. then they have to look at their own life and what they do to themselves. The companies are coming for you regardless, so you have to be smart enough and self-aware enough to be like, okay, let me not be on Instagram for six hours. Let me not be jerking off to AI Twitch bullshit all day. Think about like, what is this doing for me? Like, mm -hmm. But it's up to you. There's gonna be winners and there's gonna be losers. You gotta decide if you wanna be one of the winners or not in life, because this shit will take your soul if you're not smart and you just fall into it. Because it's easy, your, your natural human instincts are, I don't wanna be lonely. I don't wanna be without connection and love. And I wanna talk to people. You better find the right ways to do it, otherwise, you're gonna be spending $2.99 for the sex AI robot online to talk to you to give you the girlfriend experience. There's ways that you can consume things in a healthy manner. Like you could be on your phone and it'd be okay and it'd be beneficial. And you can watch entertainment and movies and enjoy it. Or if you have a business, you can have mm -hmm. all people do work for you literally through your phone. If you connect with people from outside of the world that are gonna help your business, like there's lots of ways to use it for your advantage. Yeah, it's just everything in moderation. The only thing that you can never get too much of is strawberry pie. Part because we're always I've been saying that always. pushing the limits trying to help people just trying to open up your third eye just think a little bit more because mm -hmm. you go watch this and actually you know get something out of it you know so that's why it's it's okay love y'all bye mini dinner